Good morning and a warm welcome to our webinar on financial planning during COVID-19. My name is Jim Wilson. I'm the Managing Director of Henderson Logie Financial Planning. Oh, sorry, missed out the MHA there. MHA, Henderson Logie Financial Planning. This is our first live webinar, although hopefully some of you have joined our earlier events hosted by our colleagues during lockdown. I'm hopeful you can see and hear me OK, as I have been having a bit of trouble with my, my Wi-Fi connection from time to time, but fingers crossed it will be OK today. So firstly, and I guess most importantly, I hope this finds you all in good health and coping with the challenges that this surreal and un unbelievable situation we find our ourselves in. For us, it's business as usual, and we're doing all we can to provide you with the, the service that you're used to. It is a bit different because we're obviously working from home and the office is still closed. However, it does mean that you're uh, coming to me from my dining room in the glorious kingdom of Fife. Unfortunately, no cup of coffee or biscuits on offer, so hopefully you've arranged some from yourself and you're sitting comfortably for the next hour or so. I'm delighted to say we're also practicing social distancing and today's speakers are considerably further away from me than the mandatory two two metres. David Legg works at our normally, uh, sorry, normally works at our Edinburgh office. He's by my reckoning around 68 miles away in Dunbar. Ricky Clark and Jonathan McDowell are Dundee based and joining us from their homes in and around Dundee. So I'm guessing that's about 25 miles away going by the tripometer on my car when I make that trip most days in normal circumstances. So fortunately for me, the guys will be doing most of the speaking and I'll be handing over to you, Jonathan, pretty shortly to kick things off. We're all living through something we didn't ever expect to experience. And so worrying about our own and our family's health is only natural. Equally, there are very few of us that won't have some concerns about our finances and the economy, which is apparent from some of the questions we've already received. So Jonathan's going to open up by talking about the impact of the pandemic on investment markets and what the future might hold while also briefly touching on those that are looking to target income or potentially stop income. We'll then head south to David for his suggestions on what you could be doing with your time during shutdown, what else reviewing your finances and household budget. Ricky's going to be the last of our speakers and he's got a comment on the current crisis brought about by COVID and how that might impact on retirement plans. One of Ricky's roles is to look after pension schemes for our corporate clients and advising employers and individuals saving for and approaching retirement. Ricky's going to share some of his experiences with you from the clinics he runs for companies and from his discussions with his private clients. After Ricky, it's back to me and we're going to have a question and answer session, which I'll host. We've already had a lot of questions that came in with the registration forms and thank, thank you all for those. Hopefully you'll find that some of those have been answered during our speakers talks because there is a common theme among them as, as people are a bit concerned about current economic and situation for markets etc. After that we'll try and answer as many of the others as we can at, at the end um, along with any that come in during the webinar. On that, if you do have a question, uh, you can think of when listening to our speakers, just type in the box which should be on the right hand of your screen. We're set up so that the questions will only be seen by the speakers, so it should be anonymous. Um, and if we do get too many questions or there are some we feel would be better answered later, what we'll do is we'll do our best to come back to you directly. We'll do that particularly if the questions are specific to you. So introduction over. That's enough for me for now and it's over to Jonathan. He's going to get the ball rolling with his take on how COVID has affected markets and what we might expect going forward. So you're on Jonathan. Do remember and unmute yourself. Yeah, thanks for that Jim. Good morning everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, so yeah, as Jim's already said in the current environment, it's understandable that many people are going to be concerned about the impact of the coronavirus outbreak and how this is being reflected in the value of their investments. Importantly, our role through a time like this is to help our clients, give them reassurance and make sure their plans are still on track to achieve their short and long term objectives. 
So it provides some background to what we've experienced. The impact of the coronavirus outbreak has caused the majority of the world's economies to slow significantly, with many imposing lockdown rules similar to the UK. So this has had a major impact on businesses across the world, which has created a great amount of uncertainty. So when there's uncertainty like this of the future of economies and businesses, stock markets will react negatively. And that's certainly been the case since early this year. So as the, global out as the outbreak worsened, global stock markets fell heavily in February and carried on this way until late March. Whilst we've seen significant falls in stock markets and investments in the past, it was the speed of this fall that was significantly worse. In fact, the fastest in history, and that's meant it was very difficult to react to. However, since April, we've experienced markets settling down and we've had a slight recovery. And that's partly been due to the well-received economic stimulus and government support packages introduced across the world, as well as some signs of economies removing their lockdown restrictions. There is, however, still potential that there'll be further volatility ahead over the coming months as the full impact of the coronavirus outbreak becomes clearer. The result of all this being that the UK economy's growth will decline, and the outcome of this is generally defined as a recession. But remember, investments can still grow during this time and at the time of a recession, and there are certain areas that will still perform. So this is where the expertise of investment fund managers is key to hold the right investments and ensure they invest appropriately to benefit even during these tougher market conditions. So when will we see a full recovery? Well, that is very hard to predict and nobody could do that accurately at this point in time. It is likely that the longer the shutdown lasts, the slower the rebound will be. But it is also important to bear in mind that investment markets tend to recover sooner than the actual fall. Um, or recovery in an economy. So whilst the economy may take some time to recover, investments could recover sooner than that. And that's important to, to take into account. In our role, we're not economists or investment managers. And so it's not our role as financial planners to try and predict how soon and when a recovery will happen. But what a key part of our role is, is to do our due diligence on the fund managers that we select and review their ongoing performance. So ensuring that they're still investing our clients' money appropriately at all times, not even just during a time like this. What we do know from past experience is that when we have had significant market events in the past, we have tended to see recovery investments within approximately a year, and markets have then gone on to exceed their previous highs thereafter. Although at this point, we can't say for certain that will happen um, go forward from here, but we can use that as, as a slight guide anyway. So some people may be concerned about selling, or sorry, considered selling the investments at this time to try and avoid further losses and possibly think about putting their money back into cash savings. So while sharp declines in markets can be distressing, it is important to understand that remain invested over, the long over a long time frame throughout the various ups and downs tends to be the better option to achieve longer term investment goals. So trying to time the market, i.e. trying to time when the best time to buy and sell, is a strategy that carries greater risk and the risk of missing out in some of the better periods of market performance. And that can have a major impact on long term returns and why remaining invested has a proven benefit. So for example, there's a lot of research out there to show that missing out on even just the 10 best performing days can have a big impact on long term returns. So if you use an example of the UK stock market and its performance over the last 20 years, staying fully invested during the ups and downs resulted in returns being 66% higher compared to those who would have missed those 10 best days. So that really highlights the potential benefit of why I say remaining invested tends to be a better option. So staying the course can be an, an emotional roller coaster during times of market stress like this, but research shows that this is the best investment approach over the long term, and this is certainly our view and our advice to clients during this time. That's assuming that they have no requirement to access their investments or their circumstance, circumstances haven't changed. Importantly, at a time like this, more than ever, the need to hold investments that are diversified across a range of assets and regions is very important.
So the majority of the investments that we use with our clients are highly diversified, using a wide range of assets and investment managers from across the world. And this helps at a time like this to try and mitigate some of the volatility that we have and will experience. And investing this also, so investing in this way also means that we can adapt to suit the current circumstances. So for example, we'd expect fund managers, and we know that the fund managers are avoiding some of the worst hit areas of the market. So for example, your tourism, leisure sectors, whilst they'll be repositioning the investments to take advantage of sectors and companies that will likely perform strongly in the future. And that's really important that we've got the right managers to do that. Also, from our own ongoing reviews with our clients, we would look to ensure that their investments continue to meet with their agreed risk profile and their objectives throughout a time like this. And I guess more than ever at this time, you know, the need for sound financial planning becomes really beneficial. This might also be a time, for example, for you to review any investments that you hold that you may not have reviewed in a number of years. So this is to ensure that they're still aligned to your objectives, your risk profile and preferences, as well as ensuring they're still performing as they should be. I'd suggest you get in contact with us if that was something you felt you needed advice on. So one of the main areas that we've had queries on at this point in time and in relation to the current climate is those who are drawing an income or maybe looking to draw an income from investments or pensions. So firstly, those who are already drawing an income, this is certainly a time to reassess your income needs. For example, uh, could your income withdrawals be reduced or, or even stopped altogether at this time? <clears throat> By doing this, that will help your investments to recover and reduce the impact of, of further falls should they occur. An example I'll give is if you hold excess cash savings. So could you use some of that money as a short term income source whilst your investments recover, for example? Um, I know a lot of people out there will hold a large amount in the likes of cash ISAs um, because there are tax benefits of holding these accounts. However, with the current interest rate position, with rates being reduced to all time lows um, once again, um, there's an argument that you could use these cash funds over investments and pensions and drawdown, uh, providing you, you also retain a suitable emergency fund though. One further consideration is the possibility of only drawing down the natural income from your investments or pension funds. By doing this, you won't impact the value of the, of the fund as much. And again, that would help the recovery. This, of course, is an area that would need to be assessed in more detail to your individual circumstances, investments, and whether this is possible for you. There may also be people out there who have a need to start drawing an income from their investments or pensions due to the current circumstances. And that would really be a time that I'd highlight a need for, for good financial planning advice to assess the available assets that you have and assessing the best method to draw down on these to meet your income needs over the long term and also in the most tax efficient manner. Uh, so finally, we also have queries around potential new investors. And at this time, you know, there's still many people considering what should they do with their savings. And a further knock on effect of the coronavirus outbreak has been the reduction in interest rates. Now that's been to help the economy and to help recovery, but the base rate has now been reduced to a record low of 0.1%. And there's also speculation that the base rate may even go negative. So whilst there are concerns in the current climate, making a new investment could still be beneficial at this time. If, for example, you can take a longer term view with some of your money, now could be a good time to take advantage of the lower market conditions that could offer the potential for greater growth over the long term in comparison to cash savings, in particular once the current position is recovered. Appreciate there may still be some falls that could occur, but history would show us those who have invested during volatile times have profited significantly. So, for example, those who may have invested during the financial crisis during 2008. So, in summary, the, the main factor at this point in time is our health, but looking after our clients' money and financial plans is significant to us. As already highlighted, we're in very testing times and there has and will be negative impacts on our investments. However, this might be simple, but unless your circumstances have changed or the investments have become unsuitable, 
sticking to a longer term view and remaining invested would be our best advice at present. I hope this provides a useful summary of the current climate and our thoughts with regards to investing at this time. I'd now like to pass over to David Legg, who's going to talk about some important financial planning tips and considerations in relation to the current circumstances. So thanks very much and over to David. Thank you, Jonathan, and good morning to everybody um, from a very warm and, and sunny Dunbar in East Lothian. Um, I hope uh, wherever you are, it's equally nice. I think it's meant to be the warmest day of the year today, isn't it? So that's that's positive. Um, I know there's quite a number of my my own clients who joined the webinar this morning. And good morning to you. Um, but there are also a good number of you who don't know me and I don't know you. So uh, as Jim said, I am typically based in the Edinburgh office um, and I have been with Henderson Loggy Financial Planning since March 2006, so just over 14 years, so for some time. Um, like many of you, I'm sure I'm, I'm getting quite used to, to working from home. I certainly don't miss my daily commute to Edinburgh, but what I do miss is, is, th is this. And I think Jim and Jonathan and, and Ricky would all agree that this is the part of the job that we enjoy most, is speaking with clients, uh, connecting with you. And so it's um, it's good to be able to do that today. And hopefully soon, uh, sooner rather than later, we'll be able to, to have meetings uh, face to face. Let's hope so. Uh, this morning, I'm not gonna talk in any great complexity at all um, about financial matters. I just want to, to touch upon a few things that I think uh, have possibly been neglected or even forgotten altogether in terms of financial planning when we've all been living our, our busy lives. And we'll all be coming to this crisis from different experiences. Um, that's for sure. Some of you may be employed, you may be on furlough, many of you will be retired possibly, and some might have your own businesses. And you'll all be seeing your own challenges in that respect. Um, but clearly there are going to be problems ahead for all of us and one way or another, we'll all be paying more tax, I think, when this is all in our rear view mirror. At the moment, quite understandably, we're all concerned about our, our health uh, for ourselves, our family and friends. But one day a vaccine will be found and perhaps um, we'll have other concerns from that point on and financial well-being is all part of that. The first thing I'd mention um, as a financial advisor is that um, we often talk to clients about cash, dead simple, and you'll probably have, have your own views on how much instantly accessible cash deposits you would like to have, something that you feel comfortable with, and that's a different number for different people. It's a mindset. It might be very little for some people. Other people really only feel comfortable if they have substantial liquid cash available at short notice and, and without penalty. This situation may have changed your view on that. So have a think about that. If at all possible, make sure that you do feel comfortable with what you can get your hands on, if need be, at short notice and without any penalty. So give that some thought. Another thing, again, I think the other guys would agree that as financial planners, when we sit down with, with clients, one of the questions we ask is around income and expenditure. Most people know what their income is. That's an easier number to give. But when we talk about expenditure, it's incredible how often, uh, and I know that one or two of you will be smiling just now because you can tell me to the nearest penny what you do spend each month. But I, I can assure you that's not the case for everybody. Um, if you've got enough coming in to cover what's going out, what's the problem? Well, perhaps at the moment is a good time to reassess that and what you need and what you want might be different things. They almost certainly will be different things. Now that we've all got a bit more time in our hands, I think we should all have a close look at that. Try to stop direct debits that aren't absolutely necessary if, if at all possible. Perhaps uh, club memberships or subscriptions that can be suspended and can be reinstated at a later date. We won't all have these issues and these concerns, of course. Um, but if you do, then the time to act is now. 
don't wait till it becomes a problem. It's interesting, I've spoken to a few clients who said to me, it's hard to spend money, David. Um, you know, we can't go to restaurants, we can't go to the theatre or the cinema, we can't go on holiday. And many people are finding their current accounts creeping up rather than going in the other direction. That, that won't last forever. Uh, eventually we will be able to get out and about again and perhaps the urge to go and spend money might, might be all that much greater. So the time to act on that is now, not then, because times will change and we will all be able to spend money again in future. Um, I think on that, that aspect, it's, a, it's also, we've all got our own attitude towards risk. And again, as financial planners, when we sit down with clients, that is a critical aspect of our discussion with, with you is investment risk. And it's easy, I think, when you're talking about this around the table, having a cup of tea, to think you're comfortable with how much risk you want to take with your investments. But here we are now living, living through it. And it's very real to a lot of people. They are understandably concerned about investment values and the risk they're taking. That might just cause you to, to reassess the risk you're taking. You might suddenly realise you know what, I'm actually not quite so comfortable with the level of risk that I, I spoke to Jim about. Um, others, you may be very happy and that's a good thing that you you experience these difficult times in stock markets and you actually accept that you are comfortable with that risk. And if for no, re no other reason, then that's a positive thing. Um, so talk to us about that. Have a think about your, your attitude to risk. We as Jonathan mentioned, you know, we're not economists, we're not investment managers. We work very closely with our investment partners for you to make sure that you're in the right investments with the right degree of risk. It's easy when stock markets are going up. It's human nature, we're all very happy. Sometimes we're not really too concerned if our investments have gone up by 6% of seven or 7% 7 when we perhaps should be asking those questions. It's more difficult now and investment managers are working very hard at the moment to mitigate risk, to protect the downside. And interestingly enough, the, the guys, we all had a, a conference video call yesterday with one of our investment partners, a national firm um, of investment managers who have done a very good job for, for us and for our clients. They don't have the answers, no, no, nobody does. But this is a time when they are really earning their money. They're looking for opportunities and rest assured in any crisis, um, opportunities exist. There are winners and losers in a crisis, perhaps more, more of one than the other, but opportunities are out there. It's their job to try and find those opportunities and try and wherever possible to avoid the pitfalls and mitigate against those risks. So it's important for us to talk to them so that we can advise you. So risks are an absolutely critical element about that. Uh, so I think in, in summary, let's use this time. We all have more time on our hands than most of us do. Unless any of you are moonlighting as delivery drivers for Amazon, then you're probably extremely busy if, uh, if the traffic on my road is anything to go by. So let's use this time to have a look at what we're doing. If nothing else, and if you do that, and the result is you're absolutely happy that your financial affairs are in very good order, then do you know what? That's peace of mind and it can be no bad thing. But it might just be that it does raise an issue that you want to discuss. Um, that's what we're here for. Talk to us. That's why we're doing this today. We'd like you to keep in touch with us and we'll do all we can to keep in touch with you and speak to us, get in touch with us uh, and we can help you. I think that's enough from me this morning. Um, in conclusion, I will now hand you over to Ricky, who's going to address some of the challenges that COVID-19 uh, might, uh, might give in relation to your pension planning, both, both pre and post retirement. Over to you, Ricky. Thank you for listening.
Thank you, David, um, and, and welcome to, to all of, uh, that have joined uh, our, our session today. Uh, I hope, firstly, you're all well and, and staying safe. It's nice and sunny in Dundee today, so it might make my afternoon walk a, a lot more pleasurable. I seem to be doing a lot of walking recently, um, but it's great to, to have you all here today. Um, as Jim has already mentioned, um, I, I, uh, I've got a lot of experience speaking to um, groups and doing sessions with employers, speaking to, to individuals about their retirement plans and and the growth uh, phase towards retirement. And also have a lot of um, my, my individual clients, who've jo some have joined today, um, and, and dealing with the, the, the in retirement phase. There are two clear sides to retirement, um, and, and Jonathan's already touched upon uh, a great section there about how you can adjust in retirement and adjust your income. Um, with the limited time we have, I'm going to focus on the growth phase. Um, so the accumulation phase, the, the building up our retirement funds and understanding what we have and um, how um, we and the, the, the current crisis, we can deal with some of the, the impacts it's maybe had. There are a lot of different factors to, to, to consider when we were speaking about retirement. And, and it can very much depend on uh, the time frame of your retirement. So if you've, you've got a, a longer time ago or you're closer to retirement, um, the risk that you take, as, as touched upon by David and, and, and Jonathan as well. Um, also, the, the, the other provisions that you, you may be uh, available to get to, to, to create a retirement income from yourself. So I thought that the best way to illustrate um, a, a position for some of our clients was, was to take two different time scales. Somebody uh, with a little bit longer to go and, and some of the, the questions that we've been getting asked from those individuals um, and then someone that's closer, maybe say within five years to retirement. So if we take the first scenario and you may be somebody that's in the age range like myself, uh, still fairly young, um, I had my 40th birthday in, in my house, which was amazing via Zoom. So uh, yes, I still have, unfortunately, a, a fair distance left to retirement, say 20, 25 years to go. It's highly unlikely that I'm going to be able to retire unless I won the lottery or something. Um, and, and I can't access my pensions at this point anyway. So yes, of course, a question is, uh, which is common for all, all ages, uh, is that, OK, the markets have dipped. My pension values dipped. Is there anything I should do? Are there any actions I could be take, taking? Well, firstly, I would say that, that being so far off of retirement, you have time on your hands. That is the message. So with regards to the fact that investments have dropped, we needn't worry about that so much at this time because we have so long left to go. And I would put myself in that position. I have been affected. And I have got that time left to, to, to build up. And as Jonathan said, markets can recover over the longer term. It's the longer term aspect of pensions we have to think about. The, there is a, a, another question that I've, I've, I've uh, noticed uh, frequently coming up, and it's, it's about the fact that you may be unfortunate position that you've maybe been furloughed. Uh, you've had a wage reduction. Um, you may be contributing from your company um, and you, the, the money's a better place elsewhere at the moment. Um, and or, or simply just a change in personal circumstances ha has meant that the contributions towards your pensions may suffer. And, and the question is, ca can I do anything about that? Can I stop them? The simple answer is yes. Um, if we were are dealing with you clients that I deal with, they can easily put on uh, a payment holiday reduce some of the, the, the contributions they're currently paying. I would say, however, though, you, you would have to be careful if you're part of a workplace pension or specific types of pensions, where if you cancelled um, your, your uh, pension contribution, your workplace, your employer, they contribute as well. So if you did uh, cancel that, uh, you'd obviously lose that as well. So you've got to be careful um, but, and, and consider it when you're thinking about um, the, the, the contributions that you pay. But the simple answer is yes, there is time still for us if we had to clip back to be able to make up that difference because we have a lot longer to go. 
I suppose that the, the, the final question for, for someone in my age uh, range and with the time aspect is that, you know, should I be changing the risk element uh, of my funds? And David and Jonathan have covered this. Um, and again, I, if, I, if I was answering honestly, I would say I don't think there's any need to panic at the moment. If you've got longer to go, you're a client of ours, we would have assessed your risk and the ability to cope with the, the, the ups and downs of the markets. If you're part of a workplace pension scheme, it's likely that you may be in a slightly higher type of risk at the moment. But with the time that we have, I don't think that there's any knee-jerk reactions required to have to necessarily change that risk. The, 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 the way to summarise uh, someone in my position are, remember, regular contributions can be made up and at a future date, we still have that time. The market departure at the moment is meaning that the investment funds that we're purchasing on an ongoing basis are actually cheaper. So you'd like to think over the longer period of time that will benef benefit ourselves. Um, and again, if you are a, a higher risk type investor, you have seen your values drop somewhat, this will be the case during the, uh, the, the period of your, your kind of, approach to retirement with all those years, you will see ups and downs. I think moving on, um, and there's a lot more to speak about uh, for, for someone that's closer to retirement, say within five years, there have been a few questions that have come in from individuals that have, have mentioned that if, if we are approaching retirement, we're within a certain time scale, five to seven years, you know, what, what should we be thinking about? There are many things that you might be worried about at the moment with everything that's going on, such as will I be able to retire in the time scales that I first thought? You know, will I be able to afford um, the, the retirement the way uh, I, I hoped? You know, will I need to make adjustments? How, how can I address my current uh, position? You may even be an individual that actually you, you could have retired, but you wanted to work on. Um, but now you're thinking, well, is, is it? The best time to retire now, you know, you've had all this time isolated, uh, lack of time being with the family, you may just think now is the time to retire rather than work on or, or even the job security side of things. So some of the common worries that I just mentioned there are that there is no perfect answer to them, but there is certainly a lot of factors that I'm going to point out that I think bolster what David has said about addressing your, your, your current position, but doing it focused in on your pensions. I think uh, some of the points we would like to, to highlight, and it's key for everybody, and something I would do with my clients is, what else have you got? You know, are there other uh, pensions that you might have that you haven't reviewed in some time, previous, previous employment pensions, old personal pensions? Are you invested in the appropriate way? You know, uh, the, the, and going back to the pensions that I mentioned, are they appropriate for the risk that you're willing to take just now? Could they be adjusted? Mentioning workplace pensions for those that, that, that are in attendance, it may be that, that you haven't selected your own funds and you may benefit from what's known as lifestyling, where actually when you're creeping up to retirement, your fund automatically de-risks, but that's not always the case for everyone. So it's about knowing these key points. I think um, also when you're, when we often forget about retirement. There are other ways and means to, to, to create an income in a tax efficient way. You know, what cash do you have at the moment? It's already been mentioned, we're not making any interest or, or any gains on that at the moment. Could they be used towards retirement? Do you have other investments, investment ISAs, even cash ISAs? They, they, that's a perfect way to begin drawing an income in a tax efficient way with no risk to the cash ISAs and uh, you'd be able to leave your pensions alone as well. You may have other property as well. You may even think about investing more now, you know, although the, the, the markets are, are down a little bit, it, it's the fact that it's a, a much longer term investment in, within your pension and even into retirement that you may want to consider. Even just the basic uh, starting point of reviewing your state pension, do you know what you're getting? It's a fairly simple process. Um, to, to, to get the figures for that. I think also understanding um, your income options. Um, I think that, that's, a, that's a crucial point and I'll come on to that in a moment. But 
Reviewing what you're wanting to do in retirement is also important. We all have plans of how much we think we want to spend and doing a, uh, an income and expenditure um, type exercise in our experience often shows up that you don't maybe need as much as you think. David's already highlighted there may be a period of time where we, we realise we're spending too much on certain things and it may mean that you'll clip back and want to clip back. Um, but certainly uh, you may be thinking when you retire, I want to reduce my debt, some of the tax free cash you could use. You might want to be gifting to family, you know, that around the world cruise that everybody, everybody uh, wants to do when, when they finish. Again, just understanding what you need in retirement will help the overall position. Simple stuff, but it's all relevant and will help you and us build a plan for going forward as well. A good question that we've had is, is, is it still a good time to, to retire? Draw on my income now in the, the, the situation we find ourselves or take my tax free cash. OK, it's depending on what your current circumstances are, but doing all the bits we've already spoken about will help that and help you understand what what you should and couldn't do. I think understanding your income options, which I mentioned earlier, is really, really, really important. So you, you may be someone that works for the NHS or, or the fire service. You might not have as big a worry because you know that you're going to get a guaranteed income in the future. However, if you're an individual like myself and you're building up a fund for uh, future purchasing of income, these are the things you need to understand what you can do. An annuity would be an example. That's purchasing an income for life via an insurance company. And there are different types you can get um, and you can certainly look into buying different types and they, they can provide you different levels of income. Again, if you've, you're somebody that's in poor health, you can also uh, get enhanced rates through an annuity. However, you know, you, you do have to be aware when you're purchasing this that that's your money generally gone, um, but you're taking that risk off the table if you want to completely avoid it in that sense. The only risk you would really have is inflation maybe eating up that purchasing power of the income you have from that annuity. You could also be thinking about drawing your income flexibly. This is a uh, um, very common nowadays where uh, Jonathan, Jim, we deal with a lot of retirees where we plan taking out your income in a tax efficient way. You know, you could be accessing your pensions from age 55 and taking your income out um, in a flexible manner means that you can tailor it and adjust it to what you actually need. Um, so thinking about the current circumstances that we're in, if you were looking to retire, we would be able to tailor very comfortably um, the, the income that you could take. I think reviewing other income options as well is really important. The markets are down, but if you do have, like Jonathan mentioned, large cash eyes balances, which we often see, is this something that you could be using? Bearing in mind you want to keep your emergency fund and keep a safe haven for that. But you could be using your cash eyes as well, the markets improve so that you're, you're still getting a, a tax efficient income in retirement. I think it is worth touching on uh, uh, the accessibility to tax free cash. Uh, I won't go into too much detail, but you can also uh, access up to 25% of your tax free cash um, from age 55 in most cases. Um, again, you'd have to be careful when looking into that, but you don't need to take an income going forward in a lot of cases as well. So if you were thinking now's the time to be reducing debt, um, it's, it's just something that you could be bearing in mind. I think my main point for those that are coming and nearing retirement is that bearing in mind what David and Jonathan said, there are a lot of factors to, to, to consider, but with a proper uh, analysis of what you need, this will enable you to take the income that you require and be able to handle the downs and ups. When we work with our clients, we often build in the potential of market falls so that we, we can understand what you could do to adjust to, to help that case going forward. But I think um, if we were looking at, uh, in all honesty, the taking an income, it's unlikely unless you were to purchase an annuity for life that you're going to take all your income in one go anyway. Um, certainly not something I would recommend. So just so that you can take away some final, my final thoughts and points that you could, could consider and would be helpful for you just now is that Obviously, one, careful planning with us will enable you uh, to navigate through these tricky times and understand what you need and how you can retire well. Two, don't worry about the contributions if you need to stop them. They can be increased 
or started in the, uh, in the future or ad hoc lump sum payments. I think a real important one with pensions is tax relief. Obviously, when you pay into to a pension, um, if you were to pay £80 as an example, you get basic rate tax relief instantly. So you get £100 paid into your pension on a personal pension basis. If you were paying from your, your company, you're saving on corporation tax. So pensions are, are still an incredibly tax efficient way to save. So if you do have cash, excess cash, could you be benefiting from this now? It's certainly worth reviewing. And I think finally, um, everybody's looking at what's going on uh, in, this cra in these crazy times. Um, people are reviewing their wills, their powers of attorney, but often they miss out nominating their beneficiaries within their pension plans, whether that be their workplace plans. Certainly, if they're working with us, they won't miss it. We won't let them miss it. Um, but there may be other plans you have that don't have the ones that you would want to receive your money in the event of death. And certainly, family circumstances can change. You may have more children in the future, maybe not. But again, that's something that I would certainly encourage all. Hopefully, in this short um, session with me, you've, you've been able to take something um, from that. There are a lot more points to consider when you're coming up to retirement. And, and we've actually produced a video that's uh, available from our website. It's the top tips when you're approaching retirement. It might be worth a visit uh, to look through this. But I, I must thank you for, for your time. Um, I'd like to now pass back to Jim uh, for some of his final thoughts and then open up uh, to yourselves for some questions that you might have. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Ricky, and uh, thanks to the, the rest of you. That was uh, good, a lot of interesting stuff in there. I'm not, not sure if Ricky was encouraging people to have more children there or not, which clearly could happen during this lockdown, but uh, I might have heard that wrong. Anyway, hopefully you found the talks interesting and, and in some way comforting in these uncertain times. So, as I said earlier, we've, we've had a few questions before the webinar that came in, and there's, I can see there's been um, some more came in live. So we have we have time left to answer quite a few questions, hopefully, but we will try and be quite succinct with our answers. Um, and I'll I'll maybe just look through some of them as I'm trying to look at the list here, and I, I can refer you back to the to the relevant speaker. I'm going to have a, a go at answering one myself. Firstly, however. Uh, but a question about the 2008 financial crisis, which read, as a result of the financial crash in 2008, Northern Rock, along with other banks, put cash savers at risk. Is this likely to happen again? If so, should we be considering spreading our cash throughout different banks to protect our savings? And how much does the FSCS protect? So I'll answer these a bit first. Uh, well, I think it's easy bit getting the acronym right, so the hardest bit. So FSCS is Financial Services Compensation Scheme, and they'll pay a maximum of £85,000 currently if a bank goes under. What you need to remember is that this does double up if you're a couple, so um, that goes up to £170,000 for a, a, a Mr and Mrs with money in the same bank. Uh, will, will Northern Rock situation happen again? Well. My view is I think that's much less likely than before. We're in a different position now. The banks and the regulators have learned lessons since then. We've gone through a period of austerity and there are controls in place, including regular stress tests, which should make it much less likely. It's also fair to say that the banks themselves were in a much better position before all of this started than they were back then. That said, if you are worried about spreading your cash around it, certainly something you should consider um, and to steal a bit from Martin Lewis here, do remember and check that you aren't using banks that are part of the one institution and if you do want to be super cautious then national savings should probably be considered because they're they're government backed. Right what else have we got? Um, there's a couple of questions that related back to comments from David and Jonathan and, and actually Ricky probably covered a bit. There was one that came in during the meeting, someone that's already been forced to retire due to um, C19 and asking if they should draw on savings and defer drawing pension. And we've, we've probably 
answered that one to a certain extent, but there was a, another question that specifically asked about pension tax free cash that I'm going to pass on to David. So the question read with the high current government borrowing levels, do you consider the 25% tax free lifetime withdrawal from pension pots may come under threat? Over to you, David. Can you answer that one? I will answer it, and I think the answer is no. Um, that's the short answer, um, and it's a good question. It's a question I, I get asked this regularly speaking to clients, not just during the recent crisis, but every year when the budget's coming around, is it, is it going to be threatened? I have a very good rationale for saying this. And in, in simple terms, it would be counterproductive. In summary, my views would be extremely counterproductive for any government. I don't think this is a political issue at all. I'll elaborate on that in a minute. But any government who threatens, reduces the tax free cash entitlement that we have all built up, I think it would be hugely counterproductive. Government needs all of us to save for our old age. Um, we're all living longer. If we don't make provision ourselves for our old age, we'll be a burden on the state. Heaven knows the state has a pretty big burden just now and around the corner. So they need pensions or something else to be attractive for us to have an incentive to save money to look after ourselves. And the 25% tax free cash has long been one of the principal advantages. If they attack pensions in any, in any way on the kind of broader issue, looking at the tax free cash bit, it could be moving forward for future contributions. They may reduce tax free cash entitlement for, for future contributions from 25% to 20 or 15 or 10, who, who knows? Retrospectively, I just cannot see that happening. Some people have made significant plans for their tax free cash, repaying a mortgage. Imagine if suddenly tomorrow you weren't able to do that and you've been saving into a pension for 40 years, hoping to repay your mortgage tomorrow and then you can't, what do you do? It would have serious repercussions. So possibly moving forward, something might happen. They may change tax relief. You know, Ricky's talked about the great advantages there. They suggested that before that in the last budget, I think that high rate tax relief might be um, reduced and a flat rate might be brought in for everybody. That might happen. But the principal thing here is pensions need to be attractive for people. Otherwise, as I say, I think it would be hugely counterproductive for any government to do that. So um, that's a long answer. I really don't think anybody who has built up 25% tax free cash entitlement will have that threatened, Jim. No, I don't, I don't think so. Thanks, David. OK, I'm going to spread the questions around here, not necessarily directly relating to the topics the guys were speaking about. We are all kind of GPs here in that we've, we've got a, a general knowledge on financial planning and things. So I've got one for, I think I've got Jonathan for this. Um, it's a two part question, Jonathan, lucky you. Uh, given the likely recessionary effect of the COVID-19 crisis, which you talked about, should we be adjusting pension investment risk profiles downwards? And secondly, which Ricky probably covered, but you can answer it. Are there any special flexibilities being allowed by pension providers for changes in financial circumstances from the COVID crisis? OK, so the first part of the question on reducing risk, um, answer to that would be no. I wouldn't use the current circumstances as a reason to reduce risk on your investments or pensions. <coughs> um, generally, I would recommend changing an individual's risk profile or risk of their investments if there's a reason to. Meaning by that, if there's a change to their circumstances, a good example of that could be they're coming closer to retirement. That would generally be a time we may look to reduce risk. Or if there was a change in the need for that particular pot of money that was invested, that may be a reason to change the risk. But no, I wouldn't use the current climate as a reason to do that. Um, another reason why I say that point is if you were to reduce risk, for example, 
And then we do have a recovery, which I would fully expect. If you're in a lower risk profile, you're going to see a lower and slower recovery in the value of your investment in pension funds. So I guess the summary of that point, unless there's any main, major changes um, now or, or in the near future to circumstances or your preferences, then I would remain in the current risk profile. It's something that, yeah, you would generally want advice from ourselves in any sense to assess the, the, the right risk profile for your needs. Second point, I think with regard to is there any special flexibilities with pensions? There hasn't been any new or special flexibilities introduced with regards to pensions, but in general terms, we could stop or reduce our contributions at any time to pensions. Um, there will be a, a bit of dependence on the type of pension that you have, but if you have a personal pension or a, a workplace pension that's a money purchase type, yes, you, you should be able to reduce or stop pension contributions fairly easily, easily if your circumstances dictated that. If you are in an employer's pension that may be a, a final salary or defined benefit type pension, there would need to be a bit more investigation with your employer as to how you could, how you could and if you could adjust those contributions um, rather than coming through like the scheme. I, I think on that though, um, my feeling would be if you could continue pension contributions throughout this time, that would be the best route to do. Obviously, if that's affordable, um, you know, again, for a long term aim of building up the fund for retirement. There's also the point that we've, we've all related to that, well, at this stage, if we're paying and regulating them to a pension and markets are lower, there could be an advantage over the longer term. Maybe to add one final point to that question as well. Again, no new flexibilities, but since 2015, We've had a lot more flexibility over how we can access and use our pensions and, and the means in which we can draw down on that and um, whether that be by means of lump sum withdrawal, regular income withdrawals, buying an annuity as Ricky mentioned and um, there's various options that are out there with flexibilities. So hopefully that answers. Thanks Jonathan. That was Pretty slick, actually, because I've just looked at another question I was going to actually pose to, to Ricky and you finished talking about annuities. So someone has actually asked us if, um, how does your health impact on your annuity figure? I've heard rather morbidly that those with chronic illnesses or smokers get better deals as the risk of a longer retirement is lower. Uh, you like to comment on that one, Ricky? Yep, thanks, Jim. Simple answer is yes. <laughs> the unhealthier you are, uh, the likelihood the better annuity you will get. Um, if we put it in uh, the brutal honesty of it, uh, the, the annuity or insurance providers looking at you and thinking they might not last that long. So uh, I think I think when when we look at it, if we were looking at it with a client and we were considering the options that you you have for for retirement, how, how we create that income. We would also we would always always look at annuities and we would always bear in mind uh, your your current health and, and how that looks in the longer term. Um, and, and a lot of the, the application process would be looking at current health issues. Uh, yes, smoking, cancer, type one diabetic, I am. Um, so yes, I, I would be looking for an enhancement myself, I think. Um, but certainly, yes, the, the short answer to that is that there are the potential uh, for, for for individuals to get enhanced annuity rates. We, we know that they're not that great in general. The earlier you retire, they will be poorer. Um, so it's, it's, it's there's a number of factors to take into account, but short answer to that is, is, is yes, that there is a chance you get an increase. OK, thanks, Ricky. I, yeah, I'm, I'm not on mute, just double checking there. Um, I said, I'm looking through the questions and, and, and many of them have got, got that similar theme that I mentioned and, and even the, the three answers from the guys and the one answer myself are hopefully answering a lot of them. They are saying things about are we, we're in a refresh, recession. How is that going to affect our pensions? What can we do about risk profile? Um, what are the impacts? Um, one of them was thinking, asking us if it was a a good time to, to take all your pensions together and, and have a look at them. Uh, there's one of them addressed specifically to Ricky that said something like, is it 
a good time should we take a long term perspective? Well, absolutely, that's our message. And whoever you are, would you, you like a job? You've clearly been listening. Uh, five, five minutes or so ago before we come to the end of our hour, um, we've probably got a chance to, I, I want to finish on a note that's going to add just a few numbers to you to, to hopefully put everything into to context is what you you see on the news. But we'll maybe see if we could slip in one more question before then, if I can find one that uh, I, could, I could direct to one of the guys. Uh, I mean, we have had some specific questions by the way, just asking for the value of their account, etc. Clearly, we're going to come back to you separately on on that. But we have had someone ask, is it a good time to be investing? And I think a few of you touched on that, but Jonathan was the one that talked about the markets most. So, Jonathan, you got a view on that? Uh, yeah, well, the answer would be, as I said before, if if you can take a longer term view with some money, then yes, I, I would say it's a good time to invest. Um, like I said already, if we can take advantage of lower market conditions, that could provide a, a good benefit for the future for that money. Um, Again, the answer really to that would depend on your needs for the money in the short and the long term, but in simple terms, yes. I would add, though, you would need to be accepting that we don't know exactly what will happen over the coming year. For example, there could be still some more volatility that could occur. So you'd need to be willing to accept that. And yeah, we mentioned risk, appetite and attitude to risk already. These things would need to be considered. Thanks, Jonathan. So, yeah. I say we've got about three or four minutes to go. I, I thought it would be good to try and, and um, finish off with giving you just a few a few numbers. We're all conscious at, at times when, when markets are, are reacting badly to, to any events. And I mean, this was one of the steepest declines in, in history, if not, in fact, it may even have been the, the steepest when markets fell from March time. Well, sorry, late February, I think. I think they bottomed out around about the 23rd of March. and. Yeah, you, you can all remember you're sitting watching the BBC News and you see that wonderful graphic where the line's going up and then the big arrow goes through the floor. They, they never seem to do the same as that when markets are going up the way. Um, the number that we most of us follow, the one that's most published in the UK anyway, is the, um, the, the FTSE 100 index, which measures the, the top 100 shares in the UK. And, and that was it's currently still trading at around about 6,000. It was probably around about 6,700 as a high. But if we look back at, at 12 months from from now, so well, what's this? This is the 20th. So the numbers I'm looking at were the were the 18th. Um, the FTSE had actually fallen by 14.45 percent. So that, that's clearly a significant loss in, in anyone's mind during that period. But Throughout the talks today, we, we've we've talked a lot about assessing the risk and the risk you're willing to take and your time frame and how things recover. So if we look at the, the core portfolios that, that, that we provide and, and we do outsource our investment, we, we talk to different people all the time, but we have a lot of money in core portfolios and, and they, they risk, they, they go from a, a sort of basic risk banding of, of I guess, one to five ignoring cash, which we would call under the bed, and ig ignoring anything higher than that, which is pure equi um, equities, which any of you that have listened to me before, you'll hear me talk about going to the bookies. But our lowest risk portfolio in that same period had fallen by minus 1.06%, and our highest risk portfolio had fallen by 5.85%, and anyone middle of the road, minus 4.4%. So much as it's not for me to deliver good news by telling you you've lost money, but what I think that's doing is it's shown that your, your money is protected through the diversification and the way we, we look at that. And it's not so long ago we're looking at positive figures and we go back to the same period, and I'm just using May to May because it's May at the moment. So 16 to 17, the FTSE grew by a whopping 25.74%. So as you would expect, you wouldn't get as much of that upside from us because we we clearly are diversifying. But interestingly enough, our lowest risk portfolio, I'll, I'll, I'll round the numbers now, still did over 8% and our highest risk portfolio still actually outperformed the FTSE 26 with middle of the road achieving 17. 
I'll be honest, I can't remember which of the guys talked about more good days than bad days, but one of them certainly did, and that's the thing. So that's the message. Stay invested, keep the faith, and importantly, talk to your advisor. So I think we've got the stage where it's time to wrap up. That'll make my timing look really good. Um, we're going to try and keep in touch with you. We'll, we'll do newsletters. Hopefully you can get them. There's a lot of great stuff coming up for our CA firms website as well. One of the things I'd love to encourage any of you that are already clients of ours to do is to register for our um, personal financial portal, PFP for short. David talked about budgeting, important thing. PFP can help you with that and that if you put on the information about your budget on the PFP, we can pick up at our end and then when we're having a discussion with you, either face to face, hopefully at some time in the future or more likely in the short term over some form of um, video conference call, we can do some cash flow planning for you. We can look forward for you. We can we can um, build in basically scenario planning so that you're comforted by um, what your situation looks like now, what you could do and what it might look like in future. If I forgot to say anything, sorry, I'll remember eventually when I uh, put the put the, the button to, to stop speaking down. But once again, thanks to our speakers, but most importantly, thanks to all of you. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for taking the time and look forward to speaking to you all again sometime soon. Thanks very much.